here's my task at hand. Signage on this building. It's all covered up with the scaffold netting. We start over here on the right side. Five gallon bucket system, categorized. Thinners, paints, and supplies, brushes. So I don't have to think. Schedule, color schedules. So all I have to do is just put paints in the buckets, go up and start painting. All fitch, all stucco, all fitch. Pattern first thing in the morning because the wind kicks up in the afternoon. One shot light blue right out of the can, no reduce and a uh, half inch angled fitch. Scaffolding was where it was. It was set up for stucco and painting the whole building. So ended up me sitting. So that's a plus. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and do the lettering and uh, then come back and tackle the lighthouse. This has uh, been freshly painted, the wall that is, and so there was no need to clean. It's nice and fresh, clean. It's like working on just the perfect condition. Um, Fitch is just rolling right inside of all the little humps and bumps. I go down and then back up, fill in. So when the sun hits it, you don't see those highlights, holidays. Go ahead and outline. Could have used a bigger that I could use my three-quarter inch but um, I'd rather cut in clean and plus this is a thick and super thick and thin well it's a thin it's a thin typeface but it's super thin as you can see down here base of the L so it's I just want the versatility um, it's not gonna I like to really make my my lines clean as I can my uh, edges and then filling in isn't that big a deal once you got that in you just kind of fills in fast I'd rather go with a little bit smaller brush than try to get a big brush on stucco and blast it it's gonna go fast I don't know I usually sometimes I'll time the letter Usually takes me about a minute a letter. So that kind of has uh, gives you a gauge of how long it takes. It also depends on it, the letter, because if you have serifs, it's going to take just a little bit longer. This is a sand serifs, so I'm figuring maybe just under a minute a letter, and I'll pick up speed as I go. It's fresh. It's morning. Just barely getting started. I'm trying to get my head in the game. And we'll get there. Now it's just sit back, relax, enjoy what you're doing. Try not to get too shaky. That's off to the races. Sit down. Follow through. Up. That fills in from the bottom. So you go down, fills in from the top, and go up, fills in from the bottom. That makes a nice opaque one one swiper. Also keeping it from dripping. I know that since this is freshly painted, I'll be able to have access, easy access to touch up paint. Because it often does. I try to catch it. I try to look back and catch it as I go. Um, see if there's any drips coming down. And um, there is, I catch it with a rag and, and uh, some lacquer thinner. So knock it out of there and then touch it up again. But sometimes I'll miss it. And then I'll have to come back and 
just grab some of their touch-up paint. That's not bad. Of course, the eye was <laughs> pretty fast because it's just one stroke. They were going pretty good. Starting over here at the right side because the contractor wants to take the scaffolding down as we go because it's expensive. So he wants to try to get rid of it. Um, so I'm going to get this one done so he can take the scaff this, this section of the scaffolding away. And actually, he's got to turn it around on the other corner, some of it for me, because there's a there's going to be a sign on the uh, side wall for the restaurant. This is actually a nice looking blue for this tan color. Light blue, one shot. It's nice when you can just work right out of the can, not have to mix custom colors. Just makes it awesome for multiple reasons. One, you don't have to worry about mixing too much or not enough. And then um, anything happens, you can come back and easily touch it up. I have to mix it, keep a schedule in, in my files of which colors are which. Also patterns. I always keep patterns all the way till the job's completely done. Done, finished, and approved, and solid, because you never know, especially this is new construction, they decide to, for some reason, they need to bust into a wall or something. You don't have to make another pattern, which I don't think they need to. This is very old, old building. Took a lot of retrofitting. I had to put a bunch of steel beams inside of it, so they were to. There was a lot of um, earthquake proofing. And speaking of earthquakes, not a big fan of scaffolding in in earthquake country. There's a fault line. No, you can't see it. You can't see it from here because it's uh, overcast day. But we're we're only about maybe 10 miles, 10 or 20 miles from uh, the San Andreas fault line. So earthquakes and scaffoldings are not my favorite thing. Never been on one than a scaffolding, and I hope I never will. I think that would be probably pretty terrifying. All right, it's time the H. Starting at the top of the go. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna special hurry either. I'm just gonna do it just like normal. I gotta make sure if I go over a minute, huh? I should have put the timer on. Oh well, it's alright. There, three minutes. Three minutes exactly. That age. All right. Let's see how we do with the rest of them. Okay. So the whole lighthouse element took a half hour to complete. So the, this one's all done, and we're gonna move on to the next one. So this one took total of, um, uh, so I started, I'm just going to say I started 9.30 to 11.10. So that's, what's that? One, an hour, so that's an hour, oh, about an hour, 45 minutes, hour, 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 40 minutes total time to do this. Now, this was a big pattern, uh, 12, 12 and a half feet by, it was about two, four, six feet high. So, um, yeah, and, she, and we're up we're up a little higher uh, this is kind of the main logo in the center I didn't have a level I didn't I had it had an arc down at the bottom so and not much but a gutter on top to measure off of to figure out how to make it level so I, I went to uh, one of the contractors on the site and borrowed a 24 inch level and got the letters at least three letters nailed <laughs> so anyway hopefully it'll be level Okay, this bigger logo is done now on the wall. It just needs to, the charcoal to be washed off and touch up. Got some drips here and there. Now I'm gonna go down to the third one. Now at the end there where all my supplies are. That big logo took about two hours to complete, roughly. I, brought, I had a um, lunch break and then came back to it. 
Uh, some folks like to cut in the letters. I prefer just bl blacking out the whole background and then coming back. In my opinion, white is an automatic two color, two co I mean, white is an automatic two coat. And I use a fast drying primer for the first coat, stain blocker, I'll show you that later. Um, it's to me, this is a lot faster way of doing it. And I just take and roll it, get a throwaway brush and cut the edges. This has a little, uh, like about a half inch, five eighths border around it. Great, light gray. So I'm not too worried. I just gotta get up to the line. And I'll, and I'll cut in, um, you know, I'll cut that uh, gray border in later. And I'm not cutting around anything. I'm just going to pull this thing out. Maybe it'll just ride up to the line. I may only need to use the brush around these corners. So this is the primer right here. This stuff is great. It's uh, super opaque and super um, uh, stain blocking. And also it dries really fast. So um, when you're working with it, you have to, you have to kind of get used to its little quirkiness. Uh, the biggest factor is, uh, the biggest issue is, is how fast it dries. It literally dries, I mean, you have to keep the can on, lid on, if you're, you know, while you're using it. Um, so I put it in a little cup, just as, about as much as I can use, and it's, to, it's gonna start drying as soon as the air hits it. So, but it's really great, because you can, you can uh, paint, and literally by the time I get to the end of the words, rustic table, uh, I could, almost come back and, and start um, and apply the uh, lettering enamel over the top of it. Uh, the biggest con to using it is the fact that it does dry so fast and I got an overcast day but the sun keeps kind of popping in and out and it's the sun's directly on the um, wall that I'm working on. So anyway, I'm going to use my I'm going to use my half inch Fitch so I can cut in Took about a half hour to finish. Um, I never, I did have to fill my cup once, but I never had to clean my brush. It stayed pretty thin and consistent. Sometimes I get a, like in this case, I got a thin, pretty fresh can of the primer. Sometimes I'll get a can that's been on the shelf a while from my, from my uh, distributor and it's a little thicker. So that might've been the reason. Otherwise it went on real well, smooth. Ready to roll. All right, it's pictorial time. That's the uh, tomato image here. It's gonna go here. When it hit getting comfortable is the is key. So I got all my um, upside down bottled, ready to go one shot in all the array of colors, brushes, cups, all of the um, oils and fluids and solvents and everything needed. Palette, mix, I mean cleaning cup for in between everything that you need to clean up and it's time to get started on this tomato pictorial so let's do um, the three reds vermilion fire and bright this will be considered the um, high, lighter darker medium let's start out with the medium I'm gonna get a more tomato -y than red
okay. You get to see the finished result and all its imperfections up close. Let's go like that. There we go. Simple design. Easy. Did all the touch up, all the black around the letters and around the leaves. at the top and it's time to uh, paint this emblem so with this I do a, a big giant throwaway brush um, I don't have my tripod I wouldn't trust it up here anyway it's too I've had a I've had cameras go tumbling over over the uh, top of a just because it's so it can get bouncy up here with these planks so I'm just gonna do a little quick hand hold, just paint a little bit, just for fun. This is kind of a fun thing. Let's see, I'm kind of no rhyme or reason where I'm starting. I'm just kind of gonna go for it. So yeah, look at that. Kind of cool, kind of fun. Once in a lifetime thing. I don't know how high we are. Probably a good 30 feet or so, 40 maybe. And then I'm just gonna paint this up. A lot of imperfections, but from that distance, you're never gonna see any of that. So, painting wings. This uh, is a Kelly Moore, this is a Kelly Moore color called Armadillo, what's it called? Armadillo Egg. Armadillo Egg, Kelly Moore. <laughs> then the rest is just gonna be the one shot. Okay, let's see. Now I'm gonna reduce my brush a little bit. And one shot's a little less forgiving than house paint when it comes to when it comes to putting it on this, this at this volume again, I'm going to use a throwaway brush. There's no point in some doing something like this and then spending, you know, 10, 15 minutes cleaning a brush. It just, it, to me, that just seems pointless. So, let's just get this on here. And this is going to be Drip City, so I got to really keep on it. Okay, now it's time for dark blue color of the lighthouse in the logo down below. Let's just see how this is going to look. Uh, how about if I just kind of start hitting this back to a medium brush kind of want to get this on. Mm -hmm. Next day everything's dry. Oh! Look at that. That big old drip bother you? That's so unprofessional. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let's get rid of that. More, more paint, more paint. So it's still an overcast day, so you don't get to see this thing beaming in the sun. But the sun is behind us right now, shining on this. That's better. So that's what's going to happen. Touch this up and touch up the other parts. All right. So this is all touched up, walls touched up. I went ahead and put two coats on the wing because that's a exterior, more like house paint. So I just wanted... This is one of those things where you, just, you don't want to have to come back. Just out of curiosity, let's see how high we are. I got a 35 foot tape. Sorry for bouncing around. Thirty feet from the ground to the middle of the emblem. Good way to get the excess charcoal off. One of these uh, sprayers.
cleans everything right up. All right, here's this little guy that I just knocked out. I didn't do a step-by-step -step for this one because it's basically pretty simple. And here's the finished product for the front of the building. emblem up on the roof really pops really bright colors all right well thank you so much for watching